patients find out about clinical trials? Are, are there specific questions that they should be asking their doctors about to participate in a trial? Yeah, I think it's it's tough. Um, you know, one of the one way, you know, there's a few different tools that I would recommend. One, um, if you're very interested in just what trials are going on, um, you can go to uh, uh, this national uh, cancer trials or NCT network um, and, and try to understand uh, online what trials are available. Uh, that are, so clinicaltrials.gov is the actual website, but that that'll show you the ongoing clinical trials. Uh, that are there. You can type in a disease state. So you can type in polycythemia vera mm -hmm. or myelofibrosis or essential thrombocythemia. Uh, and it'll give you a huge list of all the trials that are there. It can be kind of overwhelming because it'll list all the trials that have ever been done. But there's different ways that you can uh, stratify those results and, and look for trials that are just recruiting or that are active. And that'll taper down that list. And when you click on those trials, there, there usually is at the bottom a list of participating centers that are there. And so you can see the different centers that are there. Overall, I think that that, that is a, a very broad way of doing it and somewhat complicated. Um, but what I would ask is, and one of the things that we always push for is, is while most of these myeloproliferative neoplasms can be treated um, quite easily in the community, meaning that the, the actual mechanisms of what's being provided is not something that requires a specialized center, mm -hmm. I think the, the understanding of the disease really does. Uh, and so we always recommend having someone in your corner who's, who's an expert. They don't have to be the one who's most involved in your care, but having someone in your corner is an expert. And that's the person who's going to know what trials are going on, you know, what, what trials may be coming down the pipeline, where those trials may be occurring. And they might also tell you, okay, here's, here are the things that would prompt you to, to maybe want a trial. I mean, I had a lot of patients that were, they were surprised to realize there were trials available just because they had, they were getting, you know, six or seven phlebotomies a year. Um, you know, they were complaining about that, but they figured that was just the way things were. And, and, and lo and behold, there was actually a trial that was ongoing that was trying to reduce the need for those phlebotomies uh, in, in otherwise low risk patients. And so um, I think, yeah, you can always go to clinicaltrials.gov, but also try to ask your doctor about, hey, is there, you know, if you haven't seen an expert, is there someone close by an expert that I can see for a second opinion, just to understand the disease and ask about trials? Usually everyone's okay with that. And when you do see that expert say, hey, First of all, what trials are right for me now and what in the future might be reasonable and, and how am I going to know and how often should I check in to see uh, what things are available?